My first OMD camera was the inaugural EM5, an early forerunner of the OM5 that I am currently using. As with its latest version, now OM system, it was extremely versatile for travel photography. The image quality was excellent, as I hope this selection of images makes clear. Saltaire is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is a Victorian model village near Shipley, founded by Titus Salt in 1851, with the intention of giving workers from Bradford better living conditions. The buildings are purpose-built, and although the mill, seen here, ceased production in 1986, the whole area has been preserved. The river is the air, and in photographing the salt mill, it has been necessary to tilt the camera up from horizontal. This causes verticals to lean inwards, an optical distortion that the eye does not see, known as converging verticals, but I have corrected them in Adobe Lightroom. Hanover Point is located on the south coast of the island, between Black Gang and Freshwater Bay. Resorting to f22, the smallest aperture is often frowned upon, as quality can be reduced, but here it is essential to avoid flare, because I am pointing the camera directly into the sun. A prime lens, as opposed to a zoom, would have given me more flexibility for a wider aperture, f16 or even 11. Now here I have used f16, as the extreme highlight is off the water, and not the sky. Flare does not appear to be present. However, I have spot-metered the highlight to avoid burnout. Some correction in post-production to the raw file was necessary to bring back detail to shadows. I love an upside-down world that does not look contrived as a natural part of the scene, and reflections in still waters are great examples. I am using program, it is not auto. You can still add other settings, such as white balance and exposure compensation, and the auto exposure can be overridden with program plus shift. This is not a photographer's picture, it is a commercial one. It has been reproduced in a magazine as a double-page spread because it shows the village in good light without cars. And they, by the way, are behind me. This might be a photographer's picture because it has the essential ingredients. Atmospheric light and good composition aided by a reflection. Glencoe Lochan is artificial and has an interesting history for the curious. It is not far from Glencoe, but it is approached from the village. This may not strike you as a fantastic landscape shot, but, you know, when producing programs for YouTube, it is a good idea to have a background shot leading your audience gently into the story. Admittedly, the rainbow was the attraction, and I have better ones to come in just a moment. And here we have one straight away, a classic example of a rainbow in the right place at the right time. Difficult to predict, but a showery day when the sun is low can produce the surprise. Be on your guard and don't miss about. It is point and shoot, otherwise it will disappear before you can take it. It's behind you, is the well-known saying, and that was the case here, after the last shot. It is a photograph created purely out of light, courtesy, of course, of the rainbow and a showery day. It is amazingly clear, and whilst I would like to think that my camera had a major part to play, which it probably does, it is the incredible light and perception of the haha <laughs> photographer that creates images like this. This shot was taken the same day as the last two, demonstrating how important weather is to landscape photography. The Clarken Bridge, two shots back, is known as the Bridge Over the Atlantic, 
But the journey actually is no further than the neighbouring island of Seal, an area subject to the vagaries and extremes of weather. Salon, or is it Salon? Anyway, it's on the Ardnamurchan Peninsula, which stretches into the Atlantic, and like Easdale, the last shot, and other coastal areas on the west coast of Scotland, it is also subject to the vagaries of weather that make landscape photography so exciting. Notice for these shots that I keep the ISO at, yes, 200, regarded as best for quality. Because of light intensity in landscapes, there is absolutely no point in bumping it up, even for hand-holding. If you are hoping to get your work published, high ISO figures for no apparent reason can result in, yes, rejection, something I have learned from experience. I understand there is no point either in going to 100 ISO or even down to 50. Just forget it. Another superb rainbow shot. Like previous locations, Loch Aelot faces the Atlantic and seems to be a honeypot for rainbows. I have passed this area several times, and on three occasions have been fortunate. As mentioned earlier, the EM5 was a fantastic camera for travel, and notice too that I have used the same lens, the 12-50, to the kit lens, when the camera was first released. It is a much better optic than often made up, and although no longer in production, securing a second-hand one may be useful as backup.